Hello, I'm Guru Scott. On this video, I'm going to be doing the 1,000 mile maintenance check on my 2016 Harley Road King. Now, the reason I'm doing it instead of the dealer is, first of all, the dealer wants a minimum of $400 and up to $600 to do this service. I don't think it's that difficult of a deal. I've looked through the manual, I've made a complete checklist, and I see nothing that would uh, warrant that kind of expenditure. Besides that, I want to do the work myself. So the first thing you're going to do is take out this drain plug for the oil and I'll show you where that is underneath the bike. And so um, let's break away and I'll show you that. Okay, with the engine hot, you're going to need a quarter inch um, Allen wrench and you're going to break loose this drain plug that goes here. You don't take this plug out and you want to do this with the engine at least real warm so that it'll drain the oil out. So this machine holds four quarts of oil exactly. There are some, like some of the police bikes that hold more, but this particular one is four quarts of oil. So, um, we've drained out the oil now, and now I'm gonna remove the um, oil filter, and I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, Harley recommends you put a new O-ring on before you reinstall the uh, drain plug. So, I'm gonna do that, and I'm actually gonna put a little bit of medium strength Loctite just on the lower threads. It came from the factory with some kind of um, thread sealant, probably three bond or something like that. So I'll put that on, then I'm gonna reinstall this and I'll give you the torque setting here in a second. Okay, I'm gonna to torque this in at 22.6 Newton meters. That's simply because that's where my wrench dialed into. And um, that's in Newton meters, Newton meters, not inch pounds. So I got it tightened up to that. Now let's go change the oil filter. Okay, to get the oil filter loose, you're gonna use a special Harley filter wrench. It's got a cutout on it so it'll fit in there. That's what it looks like. Again, that's a special Harley part. I've already just loosened the filter and I'm going to actually put in a plastic piece underneath there to catch the oil and I'm going to move my drip pan under. So I'm going to get that set up and I'm going to come back. Okay, this plastic device is made to channel the oil from the filter down through all the way down into my oil pan. Now, the manufacturer of this device recommends you punch a hole in your oil filter. That seems kind of a little ridiculous. And yes, some oil might spill, but I'm gonna go ahead and just risk it and take this out and let the oil come down this sleuth. And I have to, uh, I'll get that done and I'll come back and we'll see about installing the new filter. Okay, I've installed the new filter. It recommends you screw it on till it just barely touches and then you turn it one half to three quarters of a turn which I did do. Um, one thing I noticed is I used a chrome filter. It's made for this bike, but it only went on maybe three threads before it hit the rubber seal. So um, hopefully that's okay. I think the old one that came off had probably eight or 10 threads it was on. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and add the oil now, one gallon of Redline oil. So I'm gonna get that done, I'll show you that. Okay, I'm gonna use Redline 20W50 oil. It's full synthetic. Now Harley-Davidson does not recommend this. They recommend using their Dino oil, which is um, dinosaur based or petroleum based, or their Sin 3, which if you look at the um, MSDS is about 60% synthetic and 40% conventional. Uh, my understanding is the reason for that is on the balanced camshaft engines, I mean the ones that have the engine balancers in them, they had a problem with some of the bearings spinning because they changed from Timken to some other brand. I think they were IKO out of Japan. They had a problem with fit and they spun around and caused some problems, which they blame on this being too slippery of an oil. So it shouldn't be a problem for this engine, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. So I'm gonna put that in one full gallon. Okay, I've put in four quarts of oil. Um, I've lightly tightened this. I'm gonna go ahead and start the engine, make sure there's no leaks. Let the oil filter have a chance to fill up. And then we'll come back and check the oil and make sure it's correct. Okay, this is your transmission drain plug here. So the engine oil's up front and the transmission drain plug's back here. You're gonna use a quarter inch um, Allen wrench to get it loose. And you're gonna replace the O-ring on it like you did on the engine one. Um, also, all this is covered in the manual pretty clearly. So make sure you look in the manual as you're doing these things. So I'm gonna slide my oil pan over, drain this out, get rid of it, and then um, I'll come back and we'll install the plug 
and we'll fill up the transmission. Okay, we're going to install the drain plug. Uh, first of all, I wanted to mention that you want to check to see if there's a lot of particles on here on the magnet. And uh, if there is, that could be a problem, but in my case, there wasn't. I put a tiny bit of Loctite on there, medium strength, a brand new O-ring, and I'm going to insert it in here and tighten it up to the same torque I did it on the drain plug, so I'll get all that done. And I wanted to mention that due to frame clearance errors here based upon weird design, the oil migrates all the way down on the frame, so that's another mess to clean up. I don't know why they did that. Um, maybe there's a special tool you can put under here to catch all the oil drips. So I'm gonna get this put in. It's gonna take almost a quart, maybe up to a quart of lubricant. So again, I'm going to torque this in, and then I'm going to um, add lubricant about three quarters of a quart, and then check the level, and then keep adding until I get to the right level on the dipstick. It talks about that in the manual, so you can refer to that. It's just in your owner's manual. So I'll get that done, and I'll be right back. Okay, to check the transmission fluid, you do it right in this little thing. You use a 3 8 inch Allen wrench to get it out, and when you put it back in, you don't want to tighten it too much. When you check the fluid, it has to be on the jiffy stand. You put it in until it just barely touches the O-ring, take it out, and you get the level. Uh, mine held exactly a quart because when I was draining it, I got on the bike and I sloshed the bike over to the right side and let all the lubricant drain out for about uh, 10 minutes. So we feel it was pretty well empty by that time. So now this is done and we're going to move on to the primary case. Okay, here's the drain plug for the primary cover. I put a new O-ring on it. I'm gonna install it. Same torque as all the other three plugs, all the other two plugs, I should say. I have the derby cover off. Um, I'm going to put lubricant through here to get it back in, and um, I'll do that. Put um, one quart in. It actually takes a little more if it's completely dry, but in this case, it's wet, so it takes one quart. So we're gonna get all that done, and then we're going to come back and put on the derby cover. Okay, we added one quart of uh, Redline transmission, I'm sorry, Redline primary case fluid using this type of funnel here that you can squeeze down and make it fit into the bottom where the derby cover comes off. And then we put the derby cover back on with a new gasket, um, it's like an O-ring type, and tighten these up to 12.2 newton meters, not, not inch pounds, 12.2 newton meters, which is not much, in a star pattern, so we tighten them up, tighten them up, tighten them up, went around and around and then finally did the final tightening. So this part is all done. Now I'm gonna pull the saddle bag off and we're gonna check the deflection on the um, belt drive. So we'll be done, we'll get back with that in a second. Okay, to check your belt tension, there's an inspection window right here. You have to take your saddle bag off and you have to use one of these belt tension gauges and set it for 10. And you're gonna put this in here and push up against the belt and basically it's going to push the belt with uh, I think about 10 pounds of pressure and you're going to measure that deflection and it's going to be oh, a little over 10 millimeters or so um, it, in the book it gives you the exact spec for your particular model in this case mine deflects just about right um, I checked it with the belt tension meter so I'm not going to need to make any adjustments and so while I'm in here though I will want to check my tire pressure because I can get to it from this side and so I want to make sure my tire pressure is set correctly. Okay, at this point, I've checked the um, isoelastic suspension on the engine. This uh, Torx bolt here, and there's one on the other side. I think it's a T45, and it's tight. And um, like I said, I checked the belt earlier. I put tire, um, air in the tires, 40 in the rear, 36 in the front, using a high-precision racing gauge. And I checked the brake reservoir covers to make sure they were on tight on the uh, handlebar and down below. And I don't know why Harley has you check that, but they were tight. I've checked all the electrical. I'm almost finished here. I'm gonna look up my list and see what else I need to do, and I'll come back. So one thing you're gonna to wanna to do now is check the uh, brake and clutch lever uh, fastener bolts. And I use a small Viha type handheld torque instrument. I set it to eight Newton meters and tighten these up. Now I actually have already done it because I installed this temperature gauge the other day and on the other side I installed a cell phone holder. So that's already been done and um, I checked the rear axle bolt and made sure it was tight and now I'm going to check the brake pads 
inspect them, make sure they're good, and then um, I'll come back and tell you what else we have to do. Okay, we're finishing up now. Um, I inspected all the oil and brake lines. I checked the uh, brake pads. You have to put an inspection light inside of here and look. It's very difficult to get into, um, inspect those on the front brakes. On the rear, you can just look from the back. Um, I checked all the exhaust fasteners. I lubricated the ignition switch hinge door with some Crytox lube. And the last thing you got to do is check the uh, clutch cable. You just want to make sure it operates freely and that there's a little bit of play in it, just the tiniest bit. Too much and uh, your clutch won't fully disengage. Too little and it won't fully engage. So I, if you don't know how to adjust that, then you're kind of in trouble. And the adjustment for it, if you follow the clutch cable down, it's about halfway down in front of the engine. There's a rubber boot that goes on it. You can slide it up and you can adjust it there. So that's all there is to doing the uh, 1,000 mile maintenance video. And uh, if you decide to do it, it takes about three hours if you've done it uh, only once or twice before. I, it, this is my third Harley, so I've worked on them before, but um, on a new one, I like to make sure I'm doing everything exactly according to spec. So I think I got it all. So that's all there is to this video. Thanks for watching. Tschüss.